welcome back to Fred in the Shed. Now, a while ago on this channel, you would have seen me test a very cheap cloned U loop antenna, a copy of the original Air Spy antenna. I think it was about £13. And it really worked. The only problem with that antenna was the receive was very, very low. So I thought I would get the active amplified version of that loop antenna in. And uh, yeah, here it is. So try and work out what this is called. I think it's called a H HFDY loop. The manufacturer, it's very indiscreet. I think it's uh, LZ1 AQ or something like that. But it's basically an amplified version of the same loop. We don't get all that many instructions with it, but we do get a setup page here. Okay, so it appears there are some switch settings on the loop itself, and it looks like you can have it in different formats. You can have a Mobius loop mode, electrostatic shield magnetic loop, and a magnetic field loop mode. So we can try those out once we get it set up. And then we have a little amplifier and a uh, bias T section here. And an input of 5 to 12 volts. So the idea of this antenna, it's basically, this is an indoor antenna. And not everyone can put up a long wire, have a, has a long garden. Sometimes you're stuck with using an indoor antenna. Hopefully by using a loop, you cut down on the amount of unwanted QRM, the amount of noise that uh, you get. So we've got a box full of tricks here. Um, I suppose that's a little carry case, is it? That's tiny. Okay. Right, this would be the BIOS T unit, which is a bit like a transforming amplifier, I think, which uh, comes its loop. So in here we have an RF and DC output, so I assume that goes to the antenna. A little uh, power socket there, it says it runs from 5 to 12 volts. I'll assume there is a power lead supplied and an LED indicator and then an RF socket which will go to the receiver, be it a uh, small SDR radio or a dongle to your PC. These generally work better I think with uh, SDR than, but you could use them with a normal shortwave receiver. We have a, quite a decent length here of uh, coax cable. I suppose this is, what's this, 174 or something, so a quick look. Yeah, 174. Yeah, so decent length of that. We then have another little patch lead. So I assume that's for uh, attaching the little bias T there to the receiver. Have a couple of sticky pads with nuts on because, as I say, this is an indoor antenna, so it's best if you stick it up to a window that's facing outdoors. Use it in that respect. Oh, that's quite nice. So we have a mono, a mono jack there to a little SMA. Quite useful if you're just using a basic. Uh, standard sort of uh, shortwave radio that looks quite nicely made then we have the antenna loop elements itself this is this, is, this looks exactly the same as on the non-active loop and it worked quite well Some, sometimes these loops are a bit hit or miss uh, you know sometimes they work sometimes they don't but the the, uh, the non-amplified one worked quite well so I hope this will be the same. And then we have the little uh, PCBs here, which of course makes up the loop. So we have the bottom section. I assume this is, yeah, this, so this is the amplifier and that's the maker there, um, LZ1AQ, HDY, HD, HFDY very discreet. So that will work, that's the amplifier, that will go from the bias, the bias unit will come in there and basically that will uh, go around the loop. There is one switch on there which corresponds to those instructions. So we need to be careful that we get that in the right place. And then finally we have a little T section here which is the uh, top of the loop. And once again we've got the three little jumpers which make out the motor. I can't see a power lead for the little bias unit. 
which is a little bit odd because well I've probably got one knocking about but that means if you buy this you can't use it straight out of the box if you haven't got a lead so yeah it doesn't look like they supply a power lead there it's a standard little jack but it also I mean, I'm assuming that's going to be um, center positive but it doesn't say normally you'd have a diagram to say let me just have a quick look on the instructions here oh yeah there we go yeah there it is so yeah center positive 5 to 12 volts let me just see if I've got a lead Okay, so I'm quite lucky I've, I've managed to find a lead. I've got a habit of um, <laughs> when power supplies go wrong or something, I'll just chop the lead off. So, yeah, I, I can rig something up. This is basically what you're going to need. But, um, yeah, a little bit disappointed that's not provided in the box because, obviously, you're going to want to set this up and play with it straight away. And that might cause you um, a little bit of an issue having to source a lead. So I think what we need to do is we need to take this downstairs and we need to set this up in the window and then we can play about with those switch settings. So here's the loop set up in my spare room. It's about 90 centimeters across the diameter, the same as the passive loop. You wanna get it as round as you can. Um, it's not 100% uh, perfectly circular, but that's absolutely fine. So one thing you need to be aware, and it kind of threw me out because the little switches on the control are white, but with this diagram, the black part of the diagram is the uh, is the active part of the switch. So I've got it set on the Mobius loop mode. Hopefully you can see that. And the uh, that amplifier is getting warm. So we do know that that is working. Just got it set up with a little CB power transformer here. And using the 6200. And yeah, it's actually receiving really nice, really nice and clean. To switch now to the electrostatic shield magnetic loop mode. Can't see a lot of difference on the Zygu here, to be perfectly honest. Let me just get comfortable. Zoom in a little bit. A video game needs a computer or a console, so it's obvious that when you're using it that you're... Uh, Might just be a little bit of um, dynamics either side of the signal there. And the signal strength might just be slightly higher. So this is the uh, magnetic field loop setting. I think I know this one. And I think this is probably working the most sensitive. It's bringing in the most signal. So I'm probably going to stick with that for now. Anyway, let's um, connect this up to the camera, get it nice and steady, and we'll have a little flick around, see what we can when these things begin to come to pass you look up and you lift up your head and you rejoice for your redemption
London Control Croatia is to Minsky, uh, listening to Fox Pass So there you go, that was the HFD Y Loop Amplified Indoor Antenna, a U Loop clone that really works. I, I was really impressed, and this is why I'm finishing the video in the spare room, or not in the shack, because I've decided to leave it up on the window for a little bit, or until Mrs. Fred gets bored of it and tells me to take it down. Because I was impressed how well that loop rejected QRM and also rejected my powerful AM bleedover signal that I get from the BBC, BBC2 transmitter. Had no problem with ghost signals at all with the um, antenna. So really impressed with it. Now obviously, um, there, you know, there is sort of uh, shortcomings with the design. It is purely an indoor antenna and you really couldn't waterproof that switch box at the top there. And the same thing goes really for the uh, LNA, the amplifier at the bottom, it's bare boards. Um, it would be very difficult to waterproof that to use it outdoors. You probably could do it, but it's not something I would take on. So do have to uh, bear in mind it is indoor use only, but it works pretty well indoors. Now then, um, criticisms. The only criticism I've got, and it goes back to this fact that it doesn't come with a power lead. I was lucky enough to have one, but uh, yeah, you do need to source your own power lead with the correct plug. And I think that will throw a lot of people out and that will lead to a lot of, lot of disappointment. I'm really not sure what this case is for. It comes with this tiny little case, but I mean, I don't, I don't think you get everything folded up and in there. Not really sure, but other than that, the other set, the other accessory is really good. I mean, you get a nice length of SMA coaxial cable, and high quality little uh, mono jack there, which will fit standard shortwave radios. So yeah, this one definitely gets in the dark here, but this one definitely gets the Fred in the shed um, thumbs up. Do recommend this if you cannot put up a long wire in your garden, or you're in a flat, or in a condo situation, or you just want a little um, antenna you can just chuck up on your to take on holiday or whatever. You know, pick up a bit of shortwave, bit of ham radio. Yeah, I, th I think it really does hit the mark. As always, uh, there will be a link in the description. This came in from Banggood. Thank you very much. And as always, I'll stick my neck out and try me luck and try and get you a discount if you're interested in the antenna. If I do get a discount, there will be a code in the description. Hopefully, that will save you a few quid off the price. But as for now, as always, there's a dark... Fred in the Shed, thumbs up. Thank you for dropping by. I do appreciate your view time on the channel. Never take you for granted on this channel. As always, please, please, please stay safe. There will be a lot more radio stuff coming up. We've got loads of stuff stacked up to get onto the channel. So uh, stay tuned. If you haven't subscribed, maybe you consider me a sub. Final thing, hit the thumbs up down below. If you've enjoyed the video, then I know I'm doing things right. Anyway, enough talking. Cheers. Thanks for tuning in. Stay safe. Catch you on the next one. Fred's in the shed Where the magic unfolds Fred in the shed With his trusty CB He's a friend to the lonely On a frequency